what's going on everybody happy tuesday out there hopefully again we're all staying dry and safe as we're continuing to deal with this flash flooding threat through a big section of the southeast and mid-atlantic now of course that is not the only worry uh, that we're looking at today we also do have the threat of some severe weather today as well as tomorrow and um, I'll point out some places I think tomorrow and even Thursday that could see some severe weather and we'll definitely break that down for you. We'll also talk about the tropics as we do still have Tropical Storm Brett spinning away out there and we'll talk about who is going to be impacted by that during this weekend and another system behind that one that we potentially have to look at and worry about. So, uh, you know, again, a lot going on, especially for June standards. Normally June is one of the quieter months of the year, but this year uh, we are not letting up at all. We are full pedal to the metal and, uh, you know, we'll just have to keep one eye on the radar, one eye to the sky, and I uh, wish we had a couple more eyes to look at other things. But anyway, uh, again, that will be the main focus of today's video. Uh, with that said, though, I guess we can go ahead and start talking about it because I do have a lot of tabs open here, uh, so this might take a little bit of time to get through. We will see. So we'll start here by looking at satellite over the continental United States, and here is that low pressure spinning away pretty much right over Nashville right now, and again, this is bringing up a whole lot of moisture from plenty of different bodies of water, uh, and that also being combined with this high pressure here, uh, this thing is really being fed with a lot of moisture, and that is why we have uh, that flash flooding threat. That combined with the fact that this thing is really still just sitting here. It is not moving a whole lot at all, and uh, with that, it is, again, bringing training thunderstorms, which basically just means storm that are sitting over the same place for a long period of time or really that's stationary training is whenever there's multiple storms moving over the same place but anyway for simple purposes what it means that matters to us is a whole lot of flooding and that's what we have to worry about so uh, as we look at radar, you can see why we have that threat off here into the southeast. A whole lot of rain for a whole lot of folks. And uh, we even have a big stretch of flash flood watches up here through uh, western North Carolina, upstate South Carolina, north and along I-85, and even into northeastern Georgia, uh, also there along the I-85 corridor. And the reason we're seeing that watch here in this area, it all comes down to terrain at the end of the day. Uh, so the way the Carolinas work is obviously we have the big old you know mountain chain here, but another thing that a lot of people don't realize is it's not necessarily flat down here everywhere else. So this is very, um, it's a very gradual slope, but nonetheless, it slopes up towards these mountains. So uh, as this water is coming off of the Atlantic Ocean, it is slowly rising. And then once it hits the foothills, it really begins to rise here along I-85. And that allows uh, the atmosphere to really wring out all of that moisture in the form of rain and thunderstorms. Uh, and so really the top uh, topography here really allows for that to happen. So uh, zooming in a little bit here, we do have some flood advisories right now for Anderson County, Oconee County, sections of northwestern Pickens County, and uh, up into the western North Carolina mountains as well uh, here uh, from a lot of communities here up near Spruce Pine uh, and that area of the western North Carolina mountains. So again, this will change over time, but uh, just expect over the next couple of days these continued uh, flood advisories and even flash flood warnings. We had a couple overnight and I would expect more over the next couple of days as well. So outside of all that rain here, again, we do still have excessive heat down here into sections of Texas and Louisiana that we are worrying about. Uh, so, you know, for you folks, you kind of wish it was raining. You wish it was cloudy and uh, what we're seeing here in the southeast, but unfortunately there, it's just a lot of sun and a lot of heat. And I think even uh, sections of Texas have been asked to conserve power today uh, due to that heat. So again, really uh, just make sure you're taking those precautions out there in that part of the country. So taking a look here at today's excessive rainfall outlook, we have a moderate risk, which is the second highest that we can get. Uh, so this again, goes for a lot of uh, Western North Carolina and extreme Northern upstate South Carolina. But outside of there, we still have a slight risk, which is nothing to um, overlook here for, again, much of South Carolina and North Carolina and Northeast Georgia. And then outside that, just a big old area of a marginal risk here for really just much of the Southeast as a whole. Also today, we do have some severe weather to worry about here along the Gulf Coast uh, and through much of the Florida Peninsula. And also down here, we have a slight risk in two sections of uh, Louisiana from kind of Baton Rouge down towards the New Orleans area and even down uh, towards kind of the mouth of the Mississippi River there where we have uh, the risk of, you know, some stronger storms. And again, all hazards are possible today, but especially uh, strong winds and maybe a uh, brief isolated spin-up tornado. But uh, really, I think strong winds are going to be the main risk out there today. 
As we move into tomorrow, that rain threat kind of encompasses a bit more of an area and the slight risk from the Florida Panhandle up through, again, much of Georgia and the Western Carolinas and even Southwestern Virginia. Wouldn't be surprised at all tomorrow to see a moderate risk here introduced uh, somewhere kind of in between all of this where uh, that low pressure, the flow, is going to just kind of shift a little bit more and allow more people to get in on that flooding risk. Now, also tomorrow, we once again have a severe weather outlook to worry about, uh, this time down into much of the Florida Peninsula, southern Georgia, southern Alabama, and also uh, the Great Plains getting back into that severe weather action tomorrow as well. So we will definitely uh, watch out for that tomorrow. So taking a look at the next couple of days, really the next three days or so, uh, again, this is what we're seeing right now, widespread showers and storms uh, scattered throughout much of the southeast, leading to some of that flooding. As we go into tonight, that will continue, and uh, once we start getting a bit you know, more into tomorrow morning, the kind of flow is going to change a little bit. So right now, uh, we're seeing a lot of this kind of flow, and um, you know, for a lot of us, but once we get into tomorrow, this is going to really become a lot more uh, off of the Atlantic. So this will be more of a east to west storm motion compared to a south to north storm motion that we are seeing today for a lot of folks. Uh, so again, that will you know change up a little bit on who sees that flooding threat. Again, though, tomorrow's really going to be a lot like today. Um, Areas of big time rain really hanging on and causing problems. One place I do think tomorrow that will get in a lot more on this rain compared to today will likely be up into sections of Virginia and Maryland. Uh, so for you folks up there, I expect some more rain tomorrow to work its way into the forecast before we get into Thursday afternoon. And, um, you know, again, it's a whole lot of the same on Thursday. One thing I will add for Thursday that is a bit of a concerning trend here in the models is uh, you notice this low pressure kind of gets more storms to form right on it and um, that combined with some you know more scattered storm motion or I just nature in general could lead to a bit of a tornado threat on Thursday so definitely watching that here into Georgia and the Carolinas um, more some models have been hinting at an increase in wind shear and instability so we'll definitely watch out for that and see if maybe we can get a bit more of a severe weather threat to organize for our Thursday, but of course we will talk more about that tomorrow and I'll give you a bit more of a detailed update. But if that does happen, I might storm chase on Thursday, so uh, I'll definitely let you know ahead of time. And if that is the case, I'll try to get a video out Thursday morning before I leave for whatever kind of storm chasing shenanigans uh, would occur. But of course I'll let you know all of that tomorrow and we'll see what I decide. Uh, so again, just a whole lot of rain from now through Thursday pretty much is the story from that map. Now looking at how much rain that is for the next five days, still a lot to come. So um, for much of Georgia, the Midlands and low country of South Carolina, eastern North Carolina and the Florida Peninsula, two to four inches looks like a pretty solid bet. Uh, for the next five days or so. And one thing I do also want to mention is this is going to be a pretty sharp cutoff. So um, once you start getting into Alabama and Mississippi, you're really going to be quite dry over the next five days. It's the rest of us folks, kind of Georgia and eastern Tennessee eastbound, that are going to get in on a lot of this rain. And as we move this up towards the mid-Atlantic, you'll notice we have a big swath here. And let me change the color of this thing, see it a little bit better. Uh, a big swath of that four to six inches of rain still to come here into the Western Carolinas, even into the Piedmont of the Carolinas and Virginia. Uh, so again, a whole lot of rain to come. That's why we still have that flooding threat. And I still think uh, down here into this kind of region here, uh, into the escarpment and those eastern and southern facing slopes, still likely uh, upwards of near 10 inches of rain for some folks to come, um, <clears throat> excuse me, on the way. Now, one thing I will add, the actual total forecast that we're going to get in the end is going to be more scattered than this. Uh, I wouldn't expect, you know, this entire area to be painted in these totals, but um, there will definitely be enough of us that overachieve this that um, it is still definitely a pretty big concern. All right, so taking a look kind of at uh, more of a national view here, and uh, we'll use the Euro model to do this. I'll show you what we're expecting after uh, Thursday and going into this weekend. Real quick, though, I am going to slide over here and grab my water. I don't know why I uh, set that you know as far away as possible from me, but uh, anyway, I uh, definitely needed to grab that. All right, sorry. 
I think we're good to keep on talking now. Uh, so anyway, um, looking here, going into this weekend and even into early next week, uh, I do see a bit of a change. So that is definitely some good news. Again, this is going into Thursday where we left off. Still rain in the southeast. Going into Friday, um, still rain, but Friday really is when I think things will begin to improve for a lot of folks. So uh, you'll notice Friday afternoon, it's a lot drier down here into Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, even much of North Carolina as that low pressure kind of begins to scoot its way up the Appalachian chain and brings more of those scattered showers and storms into the mid-Atlantic and northeast on Friday. Now, as we get into our Saturday, that's when things are really going to be quite nice uh, compared to the other days. Again, you'll notice a lot drier here into the southeast, and uh, hopefully these creeks and streams will finally begin to kind of go back down uh, to their normal bank levels uh, through much of the southeast. Now, unfortunately, the rain will continue, or I guess really begin in the northeast come Saturday as the slow pressure continues to scoot northward. And uh, even going into our Sunday afternoon, still some scattered rain into the northeast, but uh, still dry in the mid-Atlantic and southeast. Now, um, going into the second half of this week and then into early next week, there are some signs that another storm system uh, kind of working its way into the forecast. Uh, so we'll definitely have to watch that. And uh, the models going into early next week kind of make this quite a potent storm front uh, that could potentially bring scattered showers and storms back into the forecast going into next Monday and even next Tuesday. Uh, and we'll watch that. But Overall, next week, although you know a ways away, looks much nicer than this week as a whole uh, for just about everyone in the East. So that is definitely some good news. And with that, I would expect likely uh, some of that summertime heat to return. And uh, speaking of that summertime heat, we'll look here at uh, the departure from normal in terms of temperatures over the next uh, 7 to 10 days. And again, right now, uh, well below average temperatures in the southeast due to those clouds and rain, but still baking out into Texas and the Great Plains. Uh, but once we get into Friday afternoon, uh, as I will show you here, Friday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, uh, things become a lot more average in the east. Again, very well above average here into Texas and the uh, Midwest as we're still dealing with that pretty big summertime heat wave. Uh, but for us folks in the southeast and mid-Atlantic, we will also begin to warm back up going into this weekend before whatever uh, cold front does decide to move on through going into early next week. does put a brief pause on that warm up and uh, next week does look slightly below average, but at least drier with more sunshine. Uh, so that will definitely help to uh, bring back more of that summertime feeling compared to what we have been feeling recently here through the southeast and the northeast. So uh, for you summertime fans, next week does look a lot nicer. Uh, so, you know, potentially if you have plans to get out there, definitely a better chance to maybe go to the beach or the lake or uh, if you just like the sunshine in general, get out there and enjoy it. Uh, but first we have to get through this week, unfortunately. Now, turning focus to the tropics, again, we have Tropical Storm Brett spinning away out here in the Atlantic. Also, uh, we have an invest here, which is just an area that the National Hurricane Center is watching out for uh, potential development over the next five days. And right now, it has a high chance, I believe this is sitting at a 80 or 90% chance of developing into a tropical storm or depression over the next five days. So definitely watching that. We'll start here with Brett, though. And um, the National Hurricane Center has changed their forecast a little bit. One, they've brought this further to the south this cone and also they're expecting this to now stay at uh, tropical storm status and I think this is a much more realistic forecast I was again quite surprised yesterday when they put hurricane in the forecast for this thing but uh, they've already changed their minds on that and brought it back down to tropical storm which is good news now unfortunately we will still have impacts here into sections of the lesser Antilles uh, as this moves on through but Nothing that those folks haven't uh, seen before or are not used to. Uh, although, again, a bit strange for June, but um, definitely something that they can handle. Just some kind of gusty winds and rainy weather with maybe just a little bit of storm surge as this moves on through. Now, looking at the invest behind it, this one is a bit more of an interesting forecast. Uh, this one doesn't look to go into the Caribbean. This one looks to kind of stay more out into the Atlantic over the next week or so. And what happens after that uh, will definitely be intriguing to see. Obviously, most of the time these things curve out to sea once they get to this point. But uh, there could be some question marks as maybe this tries to continue on a path towards land. Uh, but... 
Luckily, that is, you know, at this point, really two weeks away before any impacts we would have in the United States. And again, this time of the year, it's very unusual for these things to survive all the way uh, to the United States coastline from the um, middle of the Atlantic. So we'll definitely watch that. But the models do have this strengthening into a tropical storm as well, and potentially even a rather high end tropical storm, uh, as depicted here at the kind of top of this graph from our spaghetti models and uh, all of our ensemble members seeing. Uh, what they're predicting for this wave. So again, a lot going on, flooding to deal with now, as well as severe weather, including potentially a bit of a surprise tornado threat on Thursday that we'll talk more about tomorrow into sections of the southeast. And then, of course, we have the tropics to worry about as well. But kind of, I guess, the one good piece you can take out of this is once we get through this week, I do think next week looks much nicer uh, as a whole for a lot of us here in the East, and we'll definitely watch for that and hope for it. Uh, with that said, though, I hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday, and I will see you all tomorrow.